Welcome back to another person word study, Joshua, Book of Joshua, and Judges. Okay. And remember, the point of these person word studies is person ever a reference to just the soul, or just the spirit, or just the body by itself. Okay. The whole point of these studies is people are coming out nowadays promoting the Trinity saying God in three persons. And they're saying God the Father is a person, Jesus Christ is a person, the Son of God, and the Holy Spirit is a person. And as we've proven so far in every book we've gone through, that a person is someone who has a body and a soul, and it's always a reference to somebody who's living. Right? So in other words, to say God the Father is a person, they're trying to say God the Father has a body, soul, and spirit of his own. Because they say three persons, three separate persons. Right? They're trying to say the Holy Spirit has a body, soul, and spirit of His own. And some of you, I know brothers and sisters in Christ, some of you out there, you don't believe that. A lot of people I talk to who defend the Trinity and using the term God in three persons, they do not believe that God the Father has a body, soul, and spirit of His own. They do not believe that the Holy Spirit has a body, soul, and spirit of His own. But part of the ministry here that God has blessed me with being a part of, His ministry, is words have meaning. If you're going to use the word person, you better know the definition of person, the biblical definition of person. A lot of people try to come up with their feelings and their opinions, okay? They don't mean anything if they go against the Word of God. I'm a King James Bible believer. This is God's perfect written word in English. You believe it and you obey it the best you can, okay? Nobody's perfect. I'm not perfect. I'm not sinless. And I'm not t I will never teach sinless perfection. Okay? We're going to struggle. But when you believe in this book that it's God's perfect written word, then you obey it and it judges you. Are you doing this? Are you doing that? Okay? So, words have meaning. You can, tow you can really mess up the Bible if you take words and use your own definitions for them. A lot of people have messed up the Bible by doing that. So that's why we're doing this study. So if you want to turn to Joshua chapter 20, verse 1. And we're going to go across the first time that person is used. The Lord also spake unto Joshua, saying, to, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, Appoint out for you cities of refuge, whereof I spake unto you by the hand of Moses, that the slayer that killeth any person unawares and unwittingly may flee thither. Okay, what's the person referring to? The slayer. Someone who uh, killed any person unaware. So they accidentally killed somebody. Okay, we're going to find out later it has nothing to do with someone who murders somebody. You can't murder somebody and then run to these cities. It's for people who accidentally kill somebody. So a person here is a reference to a slayer. A man or woman, mainly a man, um, or a woman that uh, kills someone accidentally. And what does a man and woman have? Body, soul, and spirit. They're living. Person's always, another thing we're realizing is person is always a reference to someone who's living. It's never, you don't say, do uh, you remember uh, someone who's dead? You remember that person so-and-so that's dead? Um, you really, that's in proper English. You only use the word person for someone who's alive. So, unwittingly they may flee thither, talking about cities, and they shall be your refuge from the avenger of blood, someone who seeking vengeance or seeking judges, uh, justice. And when he that doth flee unto one of those cities shall stand at the entering of the gate of the city and shall declare his cause in the ears of the elders of the city. They shall take him into the city unto them and give him place, him a place, that he may dwell among them. Remember, um, remember Moses, where he comes down and they're all worshiping the calf and everything, and he says, who's on the Lord's side, come to me. And he told them to go in and out from the gates and slay the men that were worshiping this false god. And the gates are where judgment happens. Okay. So at the city, the gates are where judgment happens. And they listen, they hear people out. Verse 5, And if the avenger of blood pursue after him, then they shall not deliver the slayer up into his hands, 
because he smote his neighbor unwittingly. Not murder. You can't run to these cities because you committed murder unwittingly and hated him not before time. And he shall dwell in the city until he stand before the congregation for judgment and until the death of the high priest that shall be in those days. Then shall the slayer return and come unto his own city and unto his own home unto the city from whence he fled. And they appointed Kiddush in Galilee and Mount Naphtali as a city, as one of the refuge cities. And Shechem in Jordan, see Shechem in, I'm sorry, Shechem in the Mount of Ephraim, it's another city, and I'm going to butcher this one, Kerjathaba, which is Hebron, and the Mount of Judah. And on the other side, Jordan, by Jericho eastward, they assigned Bezir, Bezer, in the wilderness upon the plain out of the tribe of Reuben, and Ramoth and Gilead out of the tribe of Gad, and Golan and Bashan out of the tribe of Manassas. These were the cities appointed for all the children of Israel and for the strangers that sojourn among them, that whosoever killeth any person at unawares might flee thither and not die by the hand of the avenger of blood until he stood before the congregation, until... So there are probably people, like I said, that murderers that still get killed until the hand of the avenger of blood, until he stood before the congregation. And, um, but the word person is used twice on this whole context. One is referring to the person doing the killing. The other one refers to the person being killed. Okay? And I put down here, and this is, should be common sense, but to kill someone, they would have to have a body and a spirit. Okay. You attack the flesh cause and kill, uh, kill you attack the flesh to the point where it causes the spirit to leave it. You always read in the Old Testament how uh, they get yielded up the ghost, they yielded up the ghost. The body gave out, the ghost left, left them. That was a way of saying they died. Okay. And we know here it's not talking about animals. So they have a soul. So both times here it's referring to Body, spirit, and soul. Okay. All three have to be present in one body to be considered a person. You can't call the Holy Spirit a person and then say he doesn't have a body and a soul of his own. Because that's the biblical definition of what a person is so far. And we're going through this Bible and I'm doing small videos so people can listen to it in passing, uh, doing work and whatnot, because... This isn't hardcore. I'd love for you to open your Bibles and follow along, but these are ones where you can listen to it because we're going and just getting context. We're not really going deep, deep in studies like I sometimes put out and brothers put out. So the next time, that's the only two times in Joshua that the word person is used. So flip over to Judges, if you have your Bibles out. Judges chapter 9, verse 1. And Abimelech, the son of... Jerbal went to Sketchum unto his mother's brethren and communed with them and with all the family of the house of his mother's father, saying, Speak, I pray you, in the ears of all the men of Sketchum, whether it's better for you. Blue Jays are out. Either that all the sons of Jerobal, which are three score and ten persons, reign over you, or that one reign over you. Now, Look at the context. There's always context in the Bible. Who's the three score and ten persons talking about? Remember, a score is twenty and ten, so it's saying seventy persons. Uh, the sons of Jeroboam. That's what person is referencing to. And they have a body, soul, and spirit. And they're trying to say, evidently, have seventy people reign over you or one person. Okay. Remember also that I am your bone and your flesh. This is Abimelech. And his mother's brethren spake of him in the ears of all the men of Shechem, all these words, and their heart inclined to follow Abimelech, for they said, He is our brother. And they gave him threescore and ten pieces of silver out of the house of Belbereth, Balbereth, wherewith Abimelech hired vain and light persons which followed him. And he went unto his father's house at Ophrah, and slew his brethren, the sons of Beral, uh, 
Jeroboam being three score and ten persons. Second time it's mentioned. And whose person referring to here again? Uh, the sons of Jeroboam. People have body, soul, and spirit. Upon one stone, notwithstanding yet Jothan, the youngest son of Jeroboam was left, for he hid himself. So there's one son left. And all the men of Shechem gathered together and all the house of Milo and went and made Abimelech king by the plain of the pillar that was in Shechem. So those are two places it's talking about person. And both times it's a reference to the sons of Jeroboam. And the sons of Jeroboam are men that have a body, soul, and spirit. They're living. Jump down to Judges 9.16. Excuse me. Now, therefore, if ye have done truly and sincerely, this is the one son that got away. I'm, I think, I'm pretty sure as we read it. Yeah, this is. Now, therefore, if ye have done truly and sincerely, and that ye have made Abimelech king, and if ye have dealt well with Jeroboam and his house, and have done unto him according to the deserving of his hand, hands, for my father fought for you, and adventured his life far, and delivered you out of the hands of Midian. And ye are risen up against my father's house this day, and have slain his sons, threescore and ten persons, upon one stone, and have made Abimelech, the son of his maidservant, king over the men of Shechem, because he is your brother. He's probably basically saying that this isn't just. If ye have dealt truly and sincerely with Jeroboam and with his house this day, then rejoice ye in Abimelech, and let him also rejoice in you. But if, Bible if, not, let fire come out from Abimelech, and devour the men of Shechem, Shechem, and the house of Milo, and let fire come out from the men of Shechem, and from the house of Milo, and devour Abimelech. Basically, if this act be just, be happy, <laughs> rejoice. If, it not, if it's not just, be afraid. So that's basically what's going on here. But Persian is a reference to the sons of Jeroboam again. Body, soul, and spirit. Jump down to Judges chapter 20. Let's go flip over to Judges chapter 20, verse 38. Okay, last time person is mentioned in the book of Judges. Judges 20, 38. Now there was a was an appointed sign between the men of Israel. I'll stop for a second. We've been getting a lot of helicopters going back and forth because up in uh, Gold Beach, uh, how do I say this? Northeast, northeast or south? Actually, southeast and east of Gold Beach. There's a fire going on, and you'll see helicopters flying back and forth a lot. I mean, you won't, but I've seen. Helicopters flying back and forth here and there. So, okay, Judges chapter twenty thirty eight. Now there was an appointed sign between the men of Israel and the liars in wait that they should make a great flame with smoke rise up out of the city. And when the men of Israel retired in the battle, Benjamin began to smite and kill of the men of Israel about thirty persons, for they said, Surely they are smitten down before us as in the bat first battle. But when the flame began to arise up out of the city with a pillar of smoke, the Benjamites looked behind them, and behold, the flame of the city ascended up to heaven. If you watch the study that I did on Judges for repent slash repentance, we talked about the whole story that's going on here. The Benjamites committed a very wicked, wicked act, and the rest of... of um, Israel is coming against them for what they did. And the first time they attacked them, because they're, they're basically in their fortified city, and the first time they attacked, they failed. So this time they came up with an idea that they're going to have men hiding, and they're going to run out with this other group and attack them and pretend like they're fleeing like they did the first time. And the men of the city got prideful, the um, Benjamites got prideful and said, hey, we're going to we're going to follow them and, you know, scatter them, and they're chasing them, and those uh, first group is pulling them away from the city. And when they got them far enough away from the city, the hidden group that was over here went into the city, started taking care of the people, and burning the city. 
and when they saw the flames going, the Benjamites turned around and saw that, got discouraged, and then the rest of Israel, the army, turned and started attacking them. And if I remember correctly, 300 survived, three or 400, it was the only amount of Benjamites that survived that. So they basically wiped them down to almost nothing. So this is saying that when the men of Israel, in verse 39, and when the men of Israel retired in the battle, in other words, acted like they were fleeing, Benjamin began to smite and kill of the men of Israel about 30 persons. So they lost 30 persons. And like I said, they got prideful, for they said, surely they are smitten down before us, as in the first battle that happened. But you read here, person, once again, is a reference to somebody who has a body and a spirit, because they're talking about they've killed them. They smite and kill them. You can only kill something that has a body, so the spirit will leave. You attack the body, and then the spirit leaves. You know what I'm saying? And we know it's talking about men, not animals. So it has a soul. Once again, body, soul, and spirit. My encouragement to you, brothers and sisters in Christ, if you're using that term, God in three persons, get it out of your vocabulary. It's not God in three persons. I've linked it. There's only per time person is a reference to a, a part of the Godhead, body, soul, and spirit, is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the only person of the Godhead because he has a body, he has the soul, God the Father in him, and he has a spirit, the Holy Spirit in him. He is, um, in him dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Okay. He's the only one that has a body, soul, spirit. He's the only one you can say is a person. So like I said, if you're still saying God in three persons, get it out of your vocabulary. Words have meaning. We believe in this book. We believe the words were chosen. God chose those words for a reason. So make sure you're following the King James Bible. And the Bible oftentimes will show the context or the definition of the word being used. Okay, context here, and when we do the study, the context here is also the definition. Okay, a person, somebody who has a body, soul, and spirit. So, I love my brothers and sisters in Christ out there. Please keep praying for us. Our cistern, I keep calling it a well, but our cistern went dry, and I started asking for prayers, and I thank you for all the prayers from the brothers and sisters in Christ, but our tank went empty. So, I had to order some water for them to come and fill up the tank. We're supposed to get some rain this Sunday. But uh, keep us in your prayers. Please, please, please keep us in your prayers. Um, grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you and my love for you in Christ Jesus. Without Jesus, my love means nothing. Our love means nothing. My love for you in Christ Jesus. I'm praying for you. Keep us in your prayers, my wife and I, and our, our home in your prayers. Uh, you get into ministry, uh, you're going to start getting spiritual attacks and you're going to start getting attacked from people. False converts uh, and just people who don't want anything to do with Jesus Christ. So, I will see you in the next <laughs> another plane heading up to Gold Beach. I will see you in the next study video of person.